Okay guys, we're getting into ski season, so I'm gonna talk about the three ski resorts that are closest to the Woodland Park area that are my favorite places to go. There's a couple other ones in there. You can get further out. You can really you know, expand that quite a bit, but these are three places that are easy to go to in a day that are a blast to go to. So stay tuned to the end and you'll get to hear all about them. Hey guys, really quick before we get in that video, this is, my name is James D with James D my real estate team. And I just wanted to make sure if you haven't done this already, make sure you hit that subscription button down below the notification bell. What that does is keeps you notified. Every time we come up with a new video, we do at least two a week. And I just want to keep you updated and just cool things to do, cool things to see out here within the Woodland Park and Teller County area. And you get to see a little bit of how I like live my life out here as well. If you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate. Give me a call, shoot me a text at 719-266-2725. You can also email me at info at jdmret.net and I will get back to you as fast as I can to answer any of those questions or comments. And if you've got any real estate needs out here whatsoever, please, once again, don't hesitate. Give me a call or, or you know, shoot me that email or that text. This is James D with James D. Mount Real Estate Team, the team leader here. And I absolutely love living here and I love helping people out here in this area too. Hope you guys like this video. All right, guys, so we're talking about my three primary ski resorts that I like to go to and ski in during the winter time here in Colorado. And the reason why these three are gonna be on this list is because they're all easily within a day trip of Woodland Park and Teller County. And what I mean by that is you can leave early in the morning, make those first lifts, going up, spend the day there, enjoy your time there, and then make it back on the same day without having to spend the night. So we're going to talk about these three places. So the first one is our favorite and our biggest go-to, which is Breckenridge. So Breckenridge, you're looking at, depending on where you are in Teller County, anywhere from an hour and a half to maybe an hour and 45 minutes to get there, you'll head west out on 24, all the way down through Wilkerson Pass into Hartzell, and then head north on 9, all the way up to 285 and then continue all the way up over Hoosier Pass and right into Breckenridge. So Breckenridge is a really cool little ski town. It is kind of pricey when you get in there for food and shopping and all that kinds of fun stuff. But this is great because we're close enough that we can go enjoy that without having to be the extreme tourists over there. Or you can go and you can enjoy a half a day of skiing, half a day of shopping and eating and hanging out. We've done that before too. So certainly two things that you can take a look at and do. They've all opened up. All these ski resorts have opened up except for Monarch right now. But Breckenridge does make their own snow out there as well. And they've got a series of different peaks that they set up. Our favorite peak is Peak 7 uh, that we get out to quite a bit. That's where we like getting out to and going. Um, and just a quick tip for you on getting to Breckenridge because it can get really busy. You definitely want to get there earlier so the parking lots are completely full. But usually you can find a good spot over by the gondola parking area, um, either on the north side or in the parking garage. If you don't have too big of a vehicle to get in there, great places to park. You've got easy access up to the mountain from the gondola. Uh, so you can go ahead and get all the way up there to the top of the mountain get all your ski gear on up there and then start your skiing uh, expedition. And the really cool thing is if you park there in that area, there's actually a run that will take you all the way back down to the gondola. Uh, so you don't have to ride the gondola back down. You can ski back down all the way down the mountain. It is a long, fun run. Pretty easy too. It's a green that kind of takes you down all the way through that range. Breckenridge has everything from green to double black diamonds. You can get above the tree line to your double blacks. They've got the T-bars you can get into. They've got lots of bunny slopes up there too. Lots of great instruction up there also. Really fun place to go skiing for sure. And there's a mid-station restaurant slash, slash bar area up there too. That's one of our favorite places to stop for some lunch on there. They've got really good mac and cheese. You can get a beer out there. You can sit inside or outside. Really cool place to check out. So Breckenridge is our number one that we go to mainly because it's usually the closest and also the easiest to get to um, as well. They're also part of the Epic Pass program if you want to get the Epic Pass through the Vail Resorts. Our next favorite is Keystone. Keystone, you're gonna go the same way you did through Breckenridge. In fact, you're gonna drive through Breckenridge to get to Keystone. 
and you're gonna go, you go around Lake Dillon all the way over to the Keystone side. Keystone is another massive ski resort that's out there that is very popular. We get a lot of military that are out there too um, that don't necessarily have the Epic Pass. They might have the Liberty Pass uh, that's out there, although the Epic now has been made for military. It's been made so cheap. And if you don't know about that, definitely take a look at that. If you're military or a veteran or retired, take a look at the Epic's military uh, pass requirements and see see what you can do on there usually it's less it's it's usually about a third of the price of a full ticket for one day for a season pass for military members depending on what time of the season is and when they're actually doing that so certainly look at that but keystone has three mountaintops you're going to start off on the front side of the mountain it's got the gondola going up there's also a couple other uh, lists will take you up there that's where the mildest easiest skiing is they do have a couple of blues on there i think I'm trying to remember. I don't think there's a black diamond. There might be a couple black diamonds going through trees along the side on the gondola over there. But then as you get all the way to the top of that peak, you can ski down the back side of that peak and go to the second peak and third peak out there as well. So really cool thing to check out for sure because you've got all these different peaks and you get more in the backcountry style skiing. The further back you get, you're definitely gonna want more of your powder type skis as you get further back. They're not as groomed back there as they're gonna be up front and they've got a bowl that you can hit as well. Lots of trees you can ski through also, but it gets more advanced as you get further back on the mountain at Keystone, but a very cool place to go. Keystone from the Wildham Park, Teller County area, depending on where you are. Within Teller County, you have, we'll just say Wildham Park, you're looking at probably about just over two hours to get to Keystone. Uh, and the longest part of that drive is gonna be getting through Breckenridge with all the traffic on there as well. So another really cool place to check out. The last place I'm gonna talk about is a very unique place, and that's Monarch. And there's a reason why it hasn't opened yet when the other ones have. These other ski resorts that I've mentioned have snowmaking capabilities. Monarch is very, very proud of the fact that they do not make their own snow. It's all natural snow. So if you're looking to get out and experience a more authentic Colorado skiing style where it's not man-made snow, it's, it's more, it's all, it's all uh, God made. <laughs> so it's all from the weather that's coming in on there. Um, and you can get some really, really good powder days out there as well. Monarch is a place to check out. So they do have a little bit slower lifts, but there's usually a lot less crowds in Monarch. It's not too far. You're looking about another two hours again from the Wilden Park area to get out to Monarch. Um, and there, there's not as much, it's not a ski town that's built around Monarch also. So that's where you're not going to get a lot of the touristy type things. It's usually a little bit cheaper to ski out there too. They don't have as many runs, but their runs are a blast. They're a little bit shorter also, but just being able to get out there. If you can get out there on a pure powder day, tons of fun to get out there and do that. They've, they do have good, uh, a couple good restaurants and they're also, you can get some beer and stuff like that too. And you can just head back into Salida if you want to as well, if you really are looking for something more. Uh, to eat than what they have to offer there at Monarch. But Monarch's a really cool thing. And you get up on the top, when you're up on the top side of it, you're actually up on the Continental Divide to ski back down. So Monarch's another really cool spot that's here close by to enjoy the skiing and, um, and all that fun stuff on. So hope you guys enjoyed that and hope you guys get out there and you try some of these local ski resorts. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever you've got, please send them to me. You can call or text me at 719-266-2725. You can also email me at info at jdmret.net. I would love to be your local real estate agent. I'd love to be your local expert. So anything, it doesn't have to be real estate related, please don't hesitate to ask. Let me know what those questions are and I will get them right back to you. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.